All right. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever you're watching. This episode of Keto Rocks. My name is Jim Hobbs, and the other gentleman on the screen is Brian Damage Foresight from Kix. And it's our pleasure to be coming at to you live again uh, to encourage you to, uh, to explore the keto carnivore lifestyle because we believe it'll rock you to a new height and uh, bring longevity and positivity into your life. So we ask all that you do is take this information and uh, like a chicken, you know, what you can eat and can digest and you like, go ahead and eat it. And the bones, throw it in a pot of boiling water and uh, make bone broth out of it and use it later on for yourself and share it with your friends and family and the people you like and even the people you don't like because everybody deserves a chance. So Brian, how's it going? It's going good. I was, yeah, we were talking before you started this, how I was, uh, both of us, we were sort of distracted be right beforehand and then realized, oh no, it's almost time. So I, you know, I was scrambling to, to uh, get my dishes done so there wouldn't be a big cluttered background. And <laughs> but I made oh, it. Yeah, you made, made it, it and I made it, and I made it, and I even forgot, what's that? Oh, I said I. Oh, you got your mug. Made, yeah, made you a brewed yourself some coffee. Yeah. Hey, how? Did, so, hey, while you hold your mug up a little bit, tell people how they get a get a Brian mug. Well, I'd have to post post the link because I don't have the I don't know the link offhand, but it's a Zazzle. It's a okay. Zazzle on, on Zazzle. Okay. Well, send the link. We'll put it on the on the show notes so people can get themselves a uh, a Brian coffee mug. And yeah, there's uh, speak. There's, Go there's ahead. A, there's a few things on there. There's mugs. There's uh, what is there? There's aprons. There's t-shirts. There's uh, a few different items. Yeah. How cool would it be? I, I don't know if we'll ever be able to gather back together in large groups, but it'd be pretty cool to have a, a keto carnivore uh, cook off sometime in the future or in the fall uh, with all the festivals going on. <laughs> it'd be cool to for us to everybody, everybody get together at some place and be able to do that. So we'll, we'll put, we'll put those uh, links at the bottom of our channel on the show notes so you can order your Brian apron or coffee mug or whatever. But talking about coffee, uh, one of the questions that we got this week actually was from my cousin responded, Brian, do you mind kind of sharing your version? Like you make bulletproof coffee. You want to tell the people what you, how you make it and then the benefits of drinking bulletproof coffee. And I'll share what, how I make mine. So I'm sure it's a little bit different. Yeah, and Bulletproof Coffee is a brand, and that, that's how I found out about the whole process, but it's, uh, I refer to it as Bulletproof Coffee, but it's, I don't actually use the, the coffee itself. I, I just use my own brand, uh, Dark Roast, but it's basically putting fat into the coffee, blending it in, uh, in the form of either butter or ghee or uh, MCT oil. So when I first started, I, I was using, I was using a Bulletproof coffee. Here, let me, hang on, let me grab this. Good. I don't know if, I, if I've showed this before on here, but this is, I don't know if you can read it, uh, Brain Octane Oil. This is an actual Bulletproof coffee brand, and this is a, an MCT oil. Um, and I used to put that in conjunction with the butter in the coffee and then blend it. Um, I stopped using this though because I don't really, it's just extra fat and it's also, um, it's coconut oil based. So, you know, it's not carnivore. So I just, I didn't really need it anymore. So now I'm just doing the straight butter in the coffee. But when you blend it, it comes out like, like this is just black coffee here, but uh, it comes out like a latte. It's so good. And I, and I use uh the place I get my duck eggs, I get um, raw, like raw cream butter that's like freshly churned and it's like this yellow. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> you could eat it with wow. a spoon. <laughs> well, well, that sounds awesome. That sounds really awesome. Now tell the people what the, bit of fat, the benefits are from having, uh, now no matter what, do you get up in the morning and have yourself a cup of coffee before you work out or after you work out? Yeah, I don't have the coffee till I'm all done that. Yeah, the workout is, is so, just water, just water, salt, and maybe some electrolyte drops. 
it's just, I, I, I like to work out in a fasted state just while my the growth hormone thing is still kicked in so I can get the full benefits of the workout and the fat burning and, and all that stuff. So um, when I'm done all that and I come back up from, from my little workout room, <laughs> that's when I make my coffee and I sit down and check my email. But the, the benefits of, uh, well, there's a few different ones. One of the benefits is uh, it slows down the caffeine absorption. So it spreads the energy of the caffeine out over, you know, a few hours instead of you getting this huge, like, jittery, like, caffeine uh, buzz. It's sort of, it, it's just a nice, smooth, like, energy lift because the fat, you know, helps to keep it from absorbing too fast. And then the other thing about the fat is it, it, it keeps you from getting hungry. So I can come up and have my coffee and then I won't eat my meal for another like three hours after that, maybe two or three hours. But it, it'll, it'll uh, hold you over, definitely. <laughs> now, and now and it just helps. Post... Go ahead. It helps. What? You said oh. it helps? I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say when you're, when you're first starting out, like say on keto or something, it helps to uh, assist your body into becoming uh, fat adapted. It sort of trains your body to to use the fat for the energy. Well, someone just asked, Lisa just asked the question, what was dinner tonight for you both? Uh, I can tell you for me, uh, I actually actually went into town uh, today to, to do our grocery shopping and stopped by a friend who owns a rib shack called Uncle Elder's and best barbecue you can get around here and stop by and haven't seen him in a couple months and talked to him for a little bit. And I ordered a rack of ribs and asked him, did he have any beef brisket? He only had a half a pound of beef brisket. So I ordered a rack of ribs, got them home. And I was so excited about getting them. And he knows that I do keto. So he knows that I opened them up and they had put sauce on them. They, they gave me the ones that weren't dry. So I, Took them next door to my daughter, to to uh, my son-in-law, and say, "Hey, here's a gift for you," and gave them to him. I came back, and I, I, for me, Lisa, I had leftover taco meat with uh, shredded uh, cheese and and sour cream. That's it. I a big bowl of that, and I have not had anything since. Uh, since 4.30 yesterday. So that was the first bite I had. So it's almost 24 hours I had, I've gone without eating. Now I had coffee in the morning. Now I make my Bulletproof coffee a little bit different because uh, I, uh, I tried, it probably defeats the purpose, but I did a uh, decaf, decaf, but I do uh, butter, grass-fed butter, and I will add cream or whipping cream, I should say, uh, sometimes I put it all in, the, in my Vitamix blender and it just becomes, it becomes very foamy and frosty. And, and I, that's what I start my day off on. Now, this is Brian's fault here because he's making me feel guilty about having stevia since he, I, so I'm, I'm trying, I'm not, I'm joking about the guilty part, but <laughs> it's something that I definitely want to wean myself off of. So I, I've actually started doing, I started not adding stevia to my coffee i've added salt instead and black and butter and so a little bit different um not that i could get used to it but uh so lisa yeah that's what i that's long drawn out that's what i had for dinner tonight leftover taco meat hey i'm gonna i'm gonna unmute lisa lisa while we're talking just in case she needs to like ask an additional sure just so they need to feel like they're participating a little i think <laughs> Yeah. How do you, un how come I can't unmute? Here, I'll, here, let me unmute. I, she may not want to talk. That's the other thing that they can do. They can override us. So I think she had messaged me earlier, said she didn't like to talk. So, oh, okay. but All right. Lisa, well, Phil, Phil, Laura, Lisa, who, whoever else. So Brian, what do you have for dinner to, today? Well, I had leftover. Well, partial leftovers i had um i made those uh the schnitzel yesterday with the beef um or beef the pork uh cutlets and there were three of them 
So I cut one in half and had one and a half yesterday for my meal. <laughs> then I ended up eating the other half of the, the half. <laughs> um, can you see me? I do. Someone's just, sounds like someone's typing. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the only trouble if you unmute somebody that when they make a noise, it'll override the screen like that. Um, so anyway, yeah. I'm, so I made in conjunction with the, the leftover schnitzel, I made a, a, a bacon cheeseburger. And then, of course, my, my usual duck egg on top. So it was like a stack, the schnitzel with the, the leftover gravy that I had, and then a cheese, cheddar cheeseburger on top of that with bacon in the egg. So that was, and, and a side of uh, cod liver. Well, I did that on, what's the day's Wednesday? I did that on Monday or Tuesday. Monday, I had a, I just had a craving that afternoon for a bacon cheeseburger. So I got grass fed beef, did my bacon and cheese and mayo and, uh, you know, without the bun. And uh, it was quite delicious. So here's a fun question that, and you guys that are watching, feel free to unmute yourself and participate if you want. But the question is, since we are in this quarantine time, what if you were quarantined to your house for the remainder of your life and you can only have five foods to eat? So you, you only have five foods that they're going to allow you to uh, bring in from the outside, and that's what you're going to have to live on for the rest of your life. So that includes, you know, chocolate. So for me, I was really struggling before the show. I, I kind of cheated it. So, so you guys that are hearing this question for the first time, my screen will not let me join. Laura's saying that. Let me see if I can unmute her. Or let's just see if we can get her. Oh, she's she unmuted. might have unmuted me. There you go. You there? Yeah. You can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh yeah, because I unmuted, but it won't let me do the video. Here, let me let me let down me see on, if we can. Down along the bottom, there's a little video thing. When I hit it, it says you can't. Oh, the host has asked you to start start my video. Oh, there you go. Ah, there we ah. go. <laughs> Lisa doesn't want to come on. No. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. No, I don't do video. I'm not afraid. <laughs> nah, uh, uh. I'm shy. Camera shy. You so, shouldn't be. Laura, so what, Laura, what, nah. what, 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 what question or insight do you have? I'm just listening, just like joining. Um, awesome. Uh, the last time I watched, I kind of had a million comments, but now that I'm listening, and I was like, oh, I, I, I wasn't typing fast enough. And then when you had the uh, invitation, I figured I'd just give it a try. Okay, well, welcome, welcome. Yeah. So Brian, let's start with you. The five foods that you're gonna be quarantined, locked up in your house with, what five foods are you going to go through eternity with? That's pretty easy. I would say, I would say ribeye. Yeah. And I'm going to show you. I already got my list. So I'm going to, well, you can't see it. I have my list right here. Let's see if I can turn it slightly so you can see it. But ribeye is on my list. So I'll ding. That's one of mine. Go ahead. All right. Ribeye. Um, eggs. And they can be either duck or chicken. Ding, ding. Just as long as they're eggs. Um, bacon. Uh, ding, ding, ding. That's three out of butter and cheese Ooh, i don't have that one i got cheese did not have butter so that's yours so the only difference so brian's i mean i'd be five foods is go ahead i was gonna say the only thing i would be bummed out that i couldn't add to the list is some well i have bacon on there but some kind of other pork meat but that's good or, or some kind of uh, organ meat <laughs> I had I had eggs, ribeye, cheese, bacon, and sashimi salmon. Ah, oh, I forgot about fish. Huh. Five was tough. I I I. What what Laura? 
Five's tough. It's not enough. <laughs> five, I know, but if you like, you only can have five. What are those five foods going to be for you? Well, if if I had to trade one in, I would get, I would lose, I dump the cheese and get sockeye salmon. No, you can't do the cheese. You're not going to be able to make a chaffle. <laughs> I'd have to sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> I can Laura, what about you? All right. So I'm, I'm not carnivore. I'm, I'm more keto, but I'm going to say eggs, steak, cheese, chocolate, and greens. I do do some green vegetables and I, I, they don't bother me and I, I would miss them. There you go. Well, that's a good five. Now, now here's the next question. What five spices? You can only take five spices with you. What are those five spices? You asking everybody? I'm asking everybody. I, I'll tell you mine. Mine was salt, <laughs> salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, and wasabi. And okay. rosemary is a I'm tough asking. one. I was <laughs> rosemary was tough. I wanted to put rosemary in there, but wasabi I need for my sashimi salmon, so I had to go with the wasabi. Okay, I'll go with garlic, red and salt. Uh, some onion powder, pepper, and maybe some smoked paprika. I got to watch spices these days, so I've got them limited. What about your foods? We didn't hear your foods. Yeah, come on, Lisa. What's your five foods? Uh, well, ribeye. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going with you on the ribeye. Bacon, eggs, definitely the salmon, and... Beef short ribs, I don't know. <laughs> no yep, cheese, yep. obviously. I can't do cheese right now and dairy for a couple weeks, so I don't miss the cheese because I like to, you know, definitely have cheese with pretty much everything. So that's yeah, it. I think for me, I guess. I think some of my leftover problems are due to dairy. I've, I've thought about maybe dropping it for a month just to see what happens, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Well, as I told you, um, this doctor suggests to try to stay off it for a couple of weeks and see how it goes. Yeah, you might and be surprised. Maybe from there, problem. I guess. Yeah, well, let's see. It's kind of an ongoing problem that I've had for, I don't know, three years or so. Well, how are you feeling today? Um, I'm not too bad today. I didn't eat that much. I've been kind of taking a break and... He wants me to, well, I was doing that one meal a day thing, and he said it's probably too much dumping it all on my system like that. And he suggested three small meals, That's which I really don't see myself eating three meals a day, but it's just a little much. Even well, though they're even, smaller, I just don't. Even, even if you just did two, it would probably help. That's yeah. what I said. If you well, heard it, Anna, we, we talked on a message, and I do two because I can't do the one. So I try to do. Yeah, I'll probably do sixteen. Yeah, I'll probably do two. I can't eat three meals a day. It's too much. If you guys hear my dogs, I apologize for that. But I have a barking dog right now, and she's not happy at the moment. <laughs> you always bark when you're on the phone. Well, huh? luckily it's only one because I have like a zoo here. But she's uh, she's in the garage at the moment, so she's kind of irritated, I guess. So, so Lisa, let, are you key, are you keto or carnivore? What I mean, are you what? Tell me what led you to to go down this path that you guys are going down. Brian. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Look at now. Now, did you just how long have you been tracking and following Brian? I mean, how long? Um. Well, I was. Uh, well, I was following his posts on Facebook and Instagram for a while, and I never really talked you know, talked about, you know, this stuff to him or, you know, just liked his pictures and stuff like that and commented on his post. But I talked to him about it. What was it? March 15th, the day after the show here in Charlotte. Yeah. And since then, I just, you know, we kind of started talking a little bit. Well, a lot. <laughs> and uh, that's how it started for me. I mean, I definitely see a change. You know, I'm just trying to get the other issues under control, and then I think I'll be good. But he's helped me yeah. more than 
anybody ever has. I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for him and I told him this, I probably would have never even uh, started doing this. Well, that goes, is awesome. You go straight carnivore, Lisa, right away? I did. <laughs> wow. I said, I dove right into it. I figured, well, if I don't, I probably won't do it. So I just took a chance and you know, now it's just adjusting, you know, what I'm eating to see what, what works for me and what doesn't is what's going on at the moment. Yeah, and that's, that's a big change, you know, jumping straight into carnivore like that. So, you know, of course your body's going to go through some shock and changes and, you know, it's got to readjust and there, there's a lot there. You know, a lot, yeah. lot, to dump on, lot to dump onto your body at once <laughs> and a lot to take away well, at the same time. Yeah, yeah, but it's going to be worth it. So I just kind of deal with it, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, it should be worth it. Well, good, Hopefully. Uh, congratulations on your decision to follow Brian's path. I think that's awesome, Lisa. How about you, Laura? What got you to go down the carnivore keto or keto, more keto for you? So it wasn't really a, it wasn't, didn't start as a keto, um, but I was uh, going through a lot of changes and just decided that I should start from the inside out. And uh, that was about two years ago. Uh, started running a little and trying to lose weight in the low fat way. Um, and then I was, uh, um, I went to a, healthy eating workshop with a naturopath doctor um, and a, another uh, woman that I dealt with. And um, I, I had been diagnosed with um, early fatty liver disease. Um, and my mother uh, passed and suffered greatly with fatty liver disease. So I was pretty upset about that. So I went to this naturopath doctor and she was the one who told me to get off the sugar and to get off carbs because that was what was causing my fatty liver disease, not the cholesterol. And um, I did a detox uh, last March through her. It was, she did sell me herbal supplements. So, um, but I did a, a, a seven day de detox and then I did a 20 and then it went extended into 21 days. So I was able to get completely off the sugar, completely off the carbs. I lost 15 pounds in 21 days. I had only lost 10 pounds in the first nine months and then lost 15 pounds in 21 days. So I was convinced that just dropping the sugar and carbs was for me. Um, and then just, just kind of kept with it. Um, I, I met Brian in June and then started following him more and realized that he was a carnivore and um, so many people are doing you know, keto. Uh, I really like, I'm not a labeler, so I like to say that I just, it's it's just clean eating and no sugar, no carbs. Although I have been cheating on the sugar in the quarantine because that's been hard. So, and I'm a sugar junkie for sure. Wow. Now, how long? Laura, how long, do you have, um, sorry. No, Laura, no, no. Did you, uh, Go ahead. Do you have a husband or kids? Do they eat with what you eat or do they eat different? Um, uh, my, my kids do not. My daughter's home from college and she just wants rice and cereal and she's not yeah. down with it at all. And my husband um, doesn't really either. He does eat because I cook and eats. He did lose probably 20 pounds just eating along with me, but he's not really giving up his carbs or sugar. He's, he's reduced it. So. Like my, mom. my mom was like that. She wouldn't give up sweets. And I've just cooked for myself, so I don't have to worry about anybody. Oh, I don't want to eat this or I don't want to eat that. So, you know, I'm by myself and I don't have to worry about anybody else. So I'm glad about that. Yeah, Except hear, the dogs. <laughs> I hear that a lot, you know, with people that have, that are married or have families where they're trying to do this, but the, the rest of the family is not. So that that's always a challenge. I, you know, I, I've, I've noticed that. And that's like one of the luxuries I have too of, of living alone. I don't have any of that stuff in the house. No sugar. There's nothing I can cheat on. Except, right. here's a funny thing. I ordered something online that just arrived today from a, a, an online music store. 
so I get the box and I open it, and the name of the store is Sweetwater. And I open the thing up and I'm, they have all this packing stuff in. It was like this huge box for this little item. But one of the things they threw in there, I forgot because I've gotten stuff from this place before. But they always throw, because I guess the name of the place is Sweetwater, there's always a little bag of like candy in there. Like a, a what is it, Tootsie Roll and something else. And, you know, just a variety of little candies. And I was like, oh man, I forgot they throw this stuff in the box. Like, you know, what am I going to do with this? You know, and I was thinking of just tossing it, but then I ended up putting it, putting it in my car because I have a bag of uh, like uh, Cliff Bars, it's stuff that I used that I pilfered from the, our backstage rider at shows, and, and brought home back when I used to eat that stuff, but I never ate it. So I put it in little bags and I have it in my car. And every once in a while, if I come off an exit ramp and there's like a guy there with a sign, I'll I'll hand him a bag of those protein bars. So now I'm going to throw this candy in one of those bags. So they get a little bonus candy bag. <laughs> yeah, I could say Omar, I'm you're not eating sweets anymore. Laura's a good thing. You didn't have Brian's daughter. You lost 15 pounds in 21 days. They would have had you on an IV drop of that insure if, uh, if, uh, if you were seeing his doctor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had it to lose. I mean, I, I lost 45 total. And I'm the same as you, Jim. I'm back to the weight that I was probably in high school. So, um, and I, I'm not going back because I, I feel too good. So um, it's hard with my daughter home because she's, uh, you know, she wants, my husband buys junk for her and, um, and it's there and I'm stuck in there. But um that that's that's my battle right now is that little bit of sugar still no no it's a battle it's a battle for me i uh last week i uh got hooked on this new i'm a dark chocoholic it's uh so there was this new chocolate i was exposed to my wife got for me and i just became addicted to it like i keep it in the refrigerator so every time i walked into the kitchen i would open up the door and i buy these keto chocolate chips and i would just pour them in my mouth and have a mouthful of chocolate, which is just, oh, that's heavenly to me. But I weigh myself every morning. I take my blood pressure every morning. And my weight went up eight pounds last week, eight pounds in one week. So I then said, all right, I'm not, I'm not letting the chocolate put me in a bad place. So I literally just cut it out, went back to my uh, been a very stringent on my intermittent fasting, having one meal a day, and I'm right back down. This morning, I'm back down where I was when I went off. You know, I didn't even go off. I was still on keto. If you look at what keto guidelines are, but I was not. Uh, I was having too much of it, and that's another. You know, I think Brian and I was talking about this last week or the week before. How your mind will say, "Oh, it's okay. You deserve it. You, you know, it'll it'll trick you into doing what's not in your best interest." And so I had to put the mind in check. I had to, I had to say, "No, no, no. You're not in control of, of me. I'm in control of me. So you're just going to have to go sit on the sidelines, and I'm not going to partake in my chocolate. Um, you know, I'm just not going to have to have to walk away from it. I, you know, it's I, the way I look at it. I go, life or death. That's really what I look at it. You know." If I know it's yeah. going to kill me, why would I put it in my body? So I just walk away from it. It was that chocolate. Was that totally like 100% unsweetened? Yes, it's uh, it's keto. It's keto. It's ch uh, I'll, I'll go get a bag of it in a second to see what the ingredients are on it. But it's supposed to be like one neck, two neck carbs. Um, is it? Um, it's, it's, it is uses it stevia. It's it's got none of the alcohol sugars on it. I can't stand those. They really mess my body up. And that's the reason why I started. This chocolate wasn't messing my body up, which is wow! I finally found chocolate that doesn't cause my stomach to go. So but I was, I was, I was all happy say, about it. I was going to say, there's something. The fact that you gained eight pounds that was probably inflammation and, and fluid retention. So something was triggering that in in your body. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm going to go grab a bag. You guys, you guys talk. I'm going to go grab the bag because now I want to find out what's in it. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brian, you know what I wanted to ask you? Um, eating this kind of lifestyle, does this, could this help your blood pressure at all? Or is that kind of not related? 
Oh no, it's all related. Um, Cause um, my doctor's appointment today, my blood pressure was like 150 over 90. It today? was kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was just, I don't know if it's cause I was nervous going to the doctor or I don't know, but it was up. Oh, I'm supposed to be, be taking. They, they, they always say you can't go by just the one single reading. Like if you're at the doctor's office, cause a lot of times it is, you are stressed at that point. Yeah. That it's better to yeah. take it a, either a few times or, or even do it at home when you're more relaxed. Yeah. Cause they're t they told me, well, you better take your blood pressure medication. Cause I really don't take it. I mean, I don't like taking meds period. Yeah. But I'm like, Oh man, I really don't. And then he wants to put me on this other pill, whatever it is, doxo something. Fentyl is like the generic name. And I don't even know about that. I'm iffy yeah. about this stuff. Well, that's supposed to do have something to do with cramps or something, but there are some side effects to that drug that you get, you should be aware of. But um, uh, read about like it all, drugs, I, all drugs come with a downside. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I don't know. Yeah, I'm not big on meds, so. Yeah, me either. I, I try not to even take a, a you know aspirin if I have a headache yeah. or something. I try not to even do that. Yeah, I, I just do salt water if I if I get a headache. Yeah, I you know <laughs> I keep forgetting about the electrolytes. Oh, I keep yeah, forgetting to put them in my drinks. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm not good. I'm not good at this stuff. Sometimes you know I'll admit it. But this diet, you know, you? I, I was going to say this diet. It, overall, it's it's anti-inflammatory. So in that way, it's it's it'll help your blood pressure because a lot of times blood pressure is due to to inflammation inside your body and, and it which restricts you know your blood flow and causes your your pressure to go up yeah what's your blood did you say you had high blood pressure laura did i hear that correctly i, I don't have high blood pressure i have high cholesterol so the doctor wants to be on a statin of course that was the that was also the fatty liver disease and then if my cholesterol didn't come down he wanted me to go on a statin so when i went back to him i had lost 35 pounds, but my cholesterol was higher than ever. And which he, part of your cholesterol though? He said both were higher, both parts. And what he's, about, what about the triglycerides? He didn't even, he didn't really even address that. And I didn't even talk to him. He, he sent a message through the nurse that uh, they would like you to prescribe. He would like you to go on a statin. And I said, I'm, I'm really not going to, and thank you, but I'm going to look for another doctor. <laughs> So I'm trying to find a, nat a naturopath doctor that would, the, the naturopath doctor that I went to originally is on, on my insurance. So I have to find someone that'll support it. And I've really just been not even going and blocking it. But at some point, <laughs> if, you don't go, if you don't go, you lose your insurance. So I'm kind of just waiting for that to, to drop. Huh. I have uh, cholesterol stuff too. Well, mine apparently is HDL. My HDL is low and it's supposed to be, you know, up like, above what it is. The number's like 40, I don't know what I said, 40, 40 something. So, and that's like, I mean, I'm not sure about all this. Triglycerides was normal. LDL was normal, but these tests were done back in September. So I think the HDL has something to do with like a risk of a heart attack. I don't know. Maybe Brian can explain it well, better than me. The, the higher the HDL, the better. That, that's the one that should be high. And the triglycerides um, should be low. If the triglyceride, the, really the number, the triglyceride number is the most important. If that one's high, then you're in trouble. But the LDL, if those other two numbers are right, then the LDL can be as high as it wants to be. It doesn't, that doesn't even enter the picture. And, and the, right. the sad part is that's the one that the doctor, only one that the doctor looks at, which has, it yeah. means nothing if, if, your HDL and triglycerides are, are in the right place. All right. Well, I did send my doctor a message today and asked him to, uh, you know, run these labs on me. And he told me just call in the office and I could come on in and get them checked out. But my LDL, I can see that probably going up since September, you know, since eating, you know, these different types of foods. It will. But whatever. I gotta, it will, but there's I got to worry about the um, HDL. I'm sorry about that. You know, my mom, my parents had, well, my mom had a, a high blood pressure and heart issues, and so did my dad. So I'm just hoping it's not like a hereditary thing. Well, you can always change that, you know. It doesn't have, it, like a lot of people think it's hereditary, but it's really, 
more about the diet that you inherit. You right, know, right. If you're eating the same things they were eating, then you're going to get the same things they got, you know? Right. Well, I'm not now. Yeah. I mean, my mom would just eat anything. She didn't, she didn't care. You know, but I'm, I definitely don't eat now with what she ate. I mean, I did. Yeah. I mean, I eat whatever, but yeah. You know, so now, so now that you've changed. changed your diet, now that you've changed your diet, then that'll change that whole thing. So it's, I don't really believe like things are hereditary like that, it's, unless they're like weird little, you know, things, but uh, like an overall, you know, the overall cholesterol, high blood pressure thing, that's usually a result of, of diet and can be changed as a real result of changing your diet. Right. And do you recommend this diet? I wasn't high, Lisa. I mean, I, I, I think total, I was only about 250. And it was above that 200 level and he wanted me to lower I, I had, I've been battling it for a long time and I had done the low fat diet and I lowered it to under 200, but then it just went right back up. But considering the, the, you know, the numbers, it's really not that high. No. And the thing is that the, um, what, what I'm, the, the level that they tell you it's gotta be under, you know who set that that level is the statin drug company yeah you know so because most people aren't going to be there so they'll have to get on that drug so they're even doing research to uh to make statins for children which is like what like why not just no. put the child on the right diet and he won't need that like they, they're always looking for a way that they can you know the food industry can keep selling crap and 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 just pile drugs on top of it to try to counteract it it's just like it's just insanity it, it, yeah. it's it's insanity and greed you know it's uh, it's both it's 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 both and the fact is we're conditioned to believe that these people who have a degree or doctor in front of their name or md and we go and you're paying them to go see them that they have your best interests at heart but they're only giving you the the knowledge in which they were taught by, and they're taught by the people who want you to buy the statins. And so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a long process to have to get away from that. That's why I was saying earlier, you know, my parents, the same thing happened to them. My dad died at age 55 and I truly believe he would be alive today had he gone to a keto carnivore lifestyle because I can remember how the doctors told him how they had to get off of eating eggs, eggs so much, and get off of butter and go to margarine and the whole low fat, the, the you know, trim the fat, take the skin off the chicken, and they put and them on with, statins. And cook with vegetable oil. And yeah, and cook with vegetable oil. <laughs> yep, that's it, yeah. I mean, so as soon as they did that, they're, they become a slave to those statin drugs. Those statin drugs, they don't feel any better. It's just keeping them alive. It's, they're not thriving in the environment that their body has become. And, well, it's, not uh, even, it's not even a matter of keeping them alive. It's just keeping those numbers down to where the doctor thinks it's okay. But, but in, in, in reality, those statin drugs do such much harm. more harm to the body than, than, uh, than, than the help that they're, they're providing. Yeah, my son-in-law, we were just having this conversation over the weekend. He's been, uh, he was diagnosed a year ago with fatty liver disease. And this doctor, we were just having this discussion, was telling him about he's got to get his cholesterol down. He's got to get on these statins and he's going to have to get it down. And we're like, no, 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 no. Cholesterol is not your enemy. Cholesterol is there for a reason. It's your cholesterol is there for a reason. You know, that's the sad part. The statins do not allow the body to do what it's doing um, to heal itself. Um, and it's, 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 it's like turning your hose off during a fire. You're, putting, you're trying to put a fire out. You got this big fire hose and you're putting the fire out. And the doctor says, no, 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 you can't have that much water going through a hose. We need to dial it back and we'll give you this water gun full of vinegar you squirt that over in there and, and, and you'll realize when you get your water bill at the end of the month, you've cut your water bill in half and you'll be happy. And you're like, what? And, and meanwhile, you died in the fire. The people you were trying to put the house on, you, you lost your, your, your possession 
that you were trying to put out. That's what cholesterol is. Cholesterol is trying to fight the fire that you have going on in your body so it goes out. Um, and then you get put on these statins. It's just not a good thing. It's, 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 it's sad. It should be criminal, in my opinion, to, to, to see there's really no evidence. The last five years, there's so much research that's been done to prove that high cholesterol, designated high cholesterol, what was designated as high cholesterol is not linked to heart attacks or strokes or anything. Um, and the, if you look at the le research the last five years, there's this much research that's been done that shows you they're not related. Yeah. Well, my, my cholesterol is super high and I'm not even worried about it. Like people are horrified when they find out what mine is. <laughs> How do you feel, Brian? Do you feel like you're on the edge of uh, of uh, checking out? No, I mean my HDL and, and triglycerides are, are are perfect, but my it's my HDL our LDL is is way up here. But the the more the better, you know. Once everything's in the right place, it doesn't matter. It can be. I mean, mine's up in mine's like what eight sixty six or something like that. It's way up there. I mean that's that's a, a total cholesterol, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and they found that the people, the people that live the longest have the highest cholesterol. So, and it, it'll, it's a, it's a Alzheimer's preventative. Uh, like the more fat you eat, the more cholesterol you have, the less chances you'll, you, you have of getting dementia and Alzheimer's. So. That's good to know. Yeah. My grandmother had Alzheimer's and she lived till she was 91. Well, that's what those statin drugs will do too. They'll, they, they'll, uh, that's why there's such a Alzheimer's, um, epidemic is because of all the statins because it starves yeah. the brain. Huh. Hey Jim, I wanted to tell you, I'm sorry about losing your dad at such a young age. It's rough. Yeah, that was probably the, uh, the roughest day I've, I've ever experienced in my life. Uh, I still remember it very clearly, even though it happened in 1989, I remember it vividly. But, my dad was 67 and he died in 2008 and my mom recently passed away. She was 75 and yeah, it's, it's rough. It is real rough, sorry, especially sorry. For, about my yeah. mom, man. I can't, I struggle with losing my mom. <laughs> it's just, it, it hurts. It really, it's just, we were like best friends. She lived right up the road, rented a little house and you know, she was kind of my company and, she ain't here and sometimes it's just like man you know i yeah. don't know <laughs> no it's tough i mean you only have you only have you only have one mom and one dad and it's and when they're no longer here it's it's it, there, there's a void there's a void mm -hmm. that uh that happens i i have very close relationship with both of my both of my parents and the, my to lose right. my dad at such an early age was uh was a big blow and uh to be truthfully, it caused me to really go off the deep end. Um, oh, yeah. And, I had and, that issue uh, too much. A bit. Yeah. It wasn't until a couple of years ago that I woke up and realized uh, what I had been trying to, to do to myself to, to, to mask that loss and, and, dealt, and, and to deal with it. You know, food is a, uh, food is a coping mechanism that we do use here, uh, your body uses. And so we turn to food for comfort. Uh, that's why we call it comfort mm -hmm. food. Um, but when you realize that uh, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy you, and you realize that you want to live because life is worth living, you start to uh, find ways and, and, and go down roads and do your own research and, and find ways that not only will you be able to enjoy life more and more abundantly, but you'll be able to uh, feel good and, and what I found out in my walks, which sounds like almost everybody on this uh, video tonight feels, is the fact that when I started to do research on my own, I found it to be in total 180 to the doctor's advice that I had heard all my life through my parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more that I went down the path and, and realizing to me, sugar should be outlawed. I mean, I mean, personally, how I, that's how strong against it I am. I mean, it's just, it's a poison. It's a poison that, uh, especially we were at the door. I said, 
Peggy and I were doing our grocery shopping uh, today and to see the number of people who are just stacking up on sugar cereals and just put them in their carts and all, all these little Debbie boxes. And look, and I've, I'm not pointing fingers. I used to be one of those stock up my, my basket with little Debbies and, uh, and, and cereals and pop tarts and all that. But you know, that's because when you don't realize that you're ingesting a, a dip, a, an addictive substance, that your brain's going to just want to crave, 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 crave. And it's really hard to break that addiction because everybody around you in the world does it. It's what you see everywhere. Um, you, you don't really look at it as the poison that it truly is. Yeah, I agree. And I so, work, and I work with kids and I work with young kids, young children, and they are getting sugar at one gold. Um, and they're, they're the, the, the food that comes into, it, it's, it's unbelievable, especially now that I'm aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, so they're addicted to sugar immediately. Yeah. Um, and they, it, it's used to get them to behave. It's used to get them to do things. It's the reward. They're completely um, sugar addicted. Um, it's, it's really sad because, uh, and, it, and it affects their behavior and everything, so. Yeah, that's the thing. That all this affects their behavior and then, you know, then they end up getting put on drugs to control their behavior when it's yeah. not, it's the food. It's a lot. To, it's I mean, they are being, they're being given drugs that cause the behavior, which is sugar, you know. Yeah. Yep. And then they, then they get the other one piled on top of that to try to suppress it. And it's just like, oh, this like endless cycle. You know, and all you have to do is start to really just be open minded and look at us as a nation. Look at the people as a nation when we went to the heart healthy diet, the, the pyramid, the food pyramid from the USDA. If you look at that and look at when we switched over in the 70s to to vegetable oils and margarine and all that crap and you see the obesity line just keep going up and up and up and up and up and up and yet supposedly we have if we're following this pyramid it's not working when is the establishment going to just come clean and and, and say that look you know we're sorry we've given you a a bad diet to follow but i don't think that day will ever come i think they ever. will yeah, it's not gonna come. It's just not gonna come. They, they're, they, they're, they're in bed together. You go to a store, you see what's there. Everything's surrounded about sugar, and the more sugar you can put into your body under a different name, whether it's Pop Tarts or you know, now they got so many different names just for the drug sugar. Um, and then you got to go to your doctor, and the doctors, as you said, I mean, the kids, that breaks my heart, the fact that they get put on the Adderall and all those drugs to sit there and try to calm them down because they got ADD or H, whatever they are diagnosed with at that age. Um, and it's really because of the food they put in their body and their brain development at that point. So it's a, you know, when you see, when I see those cartons of those, that color, all it is is sugar worth. And I see either they're, it's cheap and these moms are buying it. And I know they're buying it because it's cheap. I just, it makes me, it makes me cringe the fact that they're putting this in their body. Yeah, it's cheap now, but it, they're paying a huge expense in their health and their well being for, for going down that cheap route. It just, it's sad. Yes. Well, I just, Put in the chat, um, this doctor, like you should check out some of his videos. He's, he's like the, he's the, the carb addiction doctor. He talks about how sugar, you know, he refers to sugar as a substance and how, um, you know, a lot of food uh, issue, like he, he struggled with food issues and uh, he's just really good to listen to. He's got a, a lot of good, cool things to say about the whole food thing. It's more than being hungry and it's, uh, you know, the whole reward system and all that stuff. It's all, it's all about the, the mind and not the stomach, you know? <laughs> well, you think about it, you don't, I mean, it, it, it became a huge eye-opening experience when I started trying to find food 
that did not have some form of sugar in it. I mean, just picking up a can and buying vegetables or tomato, almost everything had corn syrup. I mean, when you start to try to find food that that's free from sugar, you start to realize how industry driven sugar is. Yeah. Cause that'll, that's when it's eye opening to realize that there's almost sugar put in everything. And why is that? Because it gets you addicted to that. You put fat and sugar together and then fry it and vegetable oil. You got yourself a home run heart attack and we're <laughs> keep coming back for more of that. Well, that's the other thing about sugar. It, it causes you your hunger to kick in again. So it causes you to eat more. So any product that they can just sneak the sugar into, it'll cause you just to want to keep eating it and eating it. I mean, I remember being a kid um, and eating cereal in the morning, and I could just keep pouring it in there and just pouring it in there until the whole box was gone. And then my mom would yell at me. <laughs> but yeah. I was like, oh, but it's so good. And never, being, and never being full. Yeah. And then like an hour, yeah, or two hours later, just like having that sugar, the uh, – the insulin thing drop and then being at school and all of a sudden just start shaking like, Oh, cause they, you know, the, uh, that whole like horrible feeling. Yeah. I have a question for you guys. Do you, do either of you know, my friend uses coconut sugar. Is there a difference between that and regular sugar? Cause I told her sugar, sugar, and nah, she sugar swears is sugar. coconut yeah. sugar's fine. No, people try to, to get around that a lot of different things like with honey like oh but it's natural yeah but it's sugar <laughs> you know it's not the processed regular sugar but it's sugar you know it's all it all you know well even carbs they all just turn to the same thing once they get inside your body and it all and it affects the same um, processes inside your body so it doesn't matter what form it comes in Right, because I went to her house, I think I told you in Virginia a couple weeks ago, and mm -hmm. she's like, oh, yeah, I made you sweet tea. I said, I can't drink that. Well, it has coconut sugar. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not drinking it. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, no thanks. I just drink water, water and coffee, and that's about it. Nothing else. Yeah, now that I've stopped using any kind of sweeteners or anything, if, if I taste something that's sweet, it just doesn't taste right to me anymore. And I'm so, yeah. I'm so glad it's like that now. Because I had such a problem with that. But now it's like, uh, I can't imagine putting sweetener in my coffee. It would, it would ruin it for me because I'm so used to not having it. <laughs> yeah, I always used to use sugar. And now, now I just drink it black. No cream, nothing. I used to buy, believe it or not, that vanilla caramel creamer junk. Oh, yeah. yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, I don't know if I can drink black coffee, but it's okay. I do the heavy cream. I like the heavy cream, but I can't, I can't use it. It's like too, that's addicting for me too. I was just at, uh, I went to had, I went to pick up a, a meat order earlier this afternoon and uh, it, they, they, it's from a kind of a local farm about an hour away and they drop it off at this produce market in, in Hendersonville right near me. And in this produce market has, they have farm fresh eggs. So I, I buy regular eggs there. And then um, they have this whole, all this cream, like milk and cream and like all these bottles in this, in this cooler, this refrigerator thing. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, maybe I should just get one of the small bottles of cream, but I can't do that. Cause then, well, for one thing, once I buy it and I have to use it cause it won't last forever. So then, uh, and then I find myself like just thinking of excuses to use it and it's just not good for me. It's just one of my weaknesses. <laughs> but I noticed it does, it affects me adversely. I get a little, if, if I drink that cream, then I, I notice I start to get puffy. So I stick to butter. My yeah, I actually, I actually, I actually use whipping cream. I used to use half and half. I use whipping cream, but I'm, I'm weaning myself off, even off of, of the whipping cream. Well, if you're uh, going to use or, anything, the, the heavy whipping cream is the best. The, the higher, the highest fat contact tent, the lower the sugar content. So, so that's that's typically what I use. But it's uh it's actually even tough to find on the shelves. Even today, it's, well, I mean, it's amazing how the shelves are just so bare. Well, you know, and another thing with the heavy whipping cream, it's hard to find one that doesn't have added ingredients. Like you have to find one that is just cream. 
Yes. Like most of the time, they'll put what is that stuff called the carrageenan? Carrageenan or I'm not sure it's, it's, kept, it's stuff that I can't even pronounce. Well, yeah, that that ingredient that's just a. Um, they Sorry, put guys. That in, they put that ingredient in, in to keep the um, to keep things suspended. Like they use that in everything, like salad dressings, so you don't have to shake it. So all the ingredients stay. So it's almost like, well, what's wrong with shaking it? It's like <laughs> people have gotten so lazy they can't even shake something before they pull it out. <laughs> they have to have some extra ingredient that keeps everything suspended, you know. And in that in that thing called that that ingredient causes inflammation. It's it's uh, highly inflammatory. So see that that's where progress is not progress. No. We have created a chemical that supposedly because we have become too lazy to even shake a. Uh, a carton of a whipping cream. It's it's a sad state of affairs. I know. <laughs> I know. Most people don't even realize it that 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 ingredient is in there, or, or even what it does. You know, they're so used to seeing all this stuff. They, you know, they look at. They probably don't even look at the label, but but you know, or you see stuff on there you can't pronounce and just go, oh, just ignore it. But I've 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 gotten really good at analyzing ingredient labels. Yeah, that's, uh, like I said earlier, you know, one of the things that really just kind of blew my mind was when even picking up vegetables, it can't, back when we, were, we used to eat a lot of, of vegetables, I didn't hardly eat any at all anymore. But I can remember even looking at the can and being surprised at how many vegetables in the can have some form of sugar. They're, they're, it's just amazing to me that we, we add it to everything and, uh, you know, people say all the time, like you, Brian, people say, well, you know, so you're telling me I can't have my fruits and vegetables and all that. I said, no, I'm not telling you that. They go, well, then what good is it? I, I said, well, look, the problem is most of the food that you buy in the vegetable aisles or the fruit aisles has been so genetically modified and it's so sweet that it was back 400 years ago when you could, you could pick it. Now, maybe 400 years ago, it probably wasn't as sweet as it is today. But you can rarely can you go into a uh, even a, a Wegmans or a, a, a World's Food or whatever those stores and that food that those vegetables and fruit have been so genetically modified that they're nowhere near where they originally uh, in the original form that they initially came from back at 400 years ago. So even the foods that supposedly have been uh, are good for us have been modified to not really be good for us. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you about organic fruits, vegetables, salads. Like if I go to the store, they have, oh, all this organic salad or this or that. Is that really true or is that just BS to get you to buy it? I mean, I don't need it anyway, but. I, I think organic's um, better, a little better. Like for, for you know, most things. Yeah. I mean, the thing about organic is, I mean, I don't know, you know, it's hard to trust the 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 regime who's also giving you the food pyramid but i mean supposedly you gotta you know your farms that are organic have to go through a five-year period of not having any pesticides and truly it is a uh, food that has not been modified and not any pesticides has been put on it during its growth and it has to be free from that for five years in the fields in which they grow it um and it's, that's one of the reasons why it's so expensive is because the amount of maintenance and care it takes to maintain those crops uh, to be able to even get them to you. You know, before, you know, uh, is it Masato? Masat What's the name, the big company? Oh, that, that, yeah, Monsanto. Yeah. Monsanto. Yeah. Monsanto, yeah. So they spray all the fields before and afterwards. I mean, talking about digesting chemicals that are meant to kill you, that's what you do. I mean, it's it's what most America does, and 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 you may not have an outward appearance of what it's doing, but it's causing inflammation in your body, and it's causing your body to get sick, and then you add all the other stuff into it to, to mask it. And you know, the really the mind, it's always craving that sugar, so it's always hungry. So you're not even giving your chance for your to really understand what your body's saying about what's going on with it right at that present moment uh, because you're in a constant fast you're not fasting I mean a constant eating frenzy you're constantly wanting food to satisfy 
the brain saying, we got to get more, we got to get more, we, gotta, we can't live without this. When are we going to eat? When are we going to eat? And so it becomes this, uh, mar- this, this food glutton marathon. And then we wonder why, you know, half of America or over half of America is obese. And to see these kids walking around now at, at age, you know, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, eight-year-olds, to be as as big as they are, it's 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 literally scary to to see where we are going in this, you know, food industry that uh, that runs here in the North America. And it causes an unproductiveness too, because. I have, I run a business, so I have, I'm always battling my employees wanting to be eating all day. They want snacks by them all day long. They have to come in and have their breakfast first thing before they get to work. Hmm. So that's their first job is to get their food. And then I, it's a childcare center. So you go through the classrooms and there's constantly snacks out in their corner so that they need to be snacking all day and when you address it it's and it causes unproductivity because you're not doing your job really you're just snacking all day and and it's it, it becomes it's mental capacity is not there and uh we've become an unproductive society too because of it well, not only that, but you do anything for 21 days straight, it becomes a habit. So your body now is habitually addicted to that habit of snacking throughout the whole day. And then you got doctors who tell you, or just like they were telling Lisa, I think, you know, spread the meal out, three to five meals, you know, spread it out. Well, what are you going back to? You're going back and your brain remembers eating those snacks throughout the day. So your brain remembers that and goes, oh, yeah, let's do that. We feel good when we do that. And the reality is you may feel good in the mind, but your body's paying a heavy price for feeding the mind the junk that we put in our body. I think I'm just going to go with the two meals a day because my work schedule and sleep schedule and everything's kind of screwed up. I work third shift. so And I work at a lab, so we're not allowed. I mean, we're not allowed to have food, drinks, nothing out there. Um, so I got to figure out when I'm going to eat it's a mess. I mean, I'm up all night, so I have time, but I don't want to be eating at like three o'clock in the morning. So if you guys can suggest like around what times maybe I should eat, I'd appreciate it. I mean, I'm just trying to come up with some kind of plan here to figure out what I'm going to do. Well, my suggestion would be don't just get out of the mind of trying to eat at a set schedule and just get in the mind of, you know, eating, you know, take a page out of, 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 of Brian's book and just try to go, you know, I'm not saying go 16 hours without having a, a meal, but, you know, start off going maybe 10 and 12 and, and just, because I think once we break the habit of thinking that we have to eat every three hours or four hours or five hours, six hours, 10 hours, and we get off the sugar, I think we realize that how much more productive we are, as Laura was talking about, how much more productive we are without having to constantly every other thought being about what are we going to eat? What are we going to eat? What are we going to eat? Um, and I think the more that you're able to do that, I think the, the better your body will respond to that. So, those so hours on in between. 16, so on that, the 16, eight, does that eight, does it matter for her so that if she just does that eight hours of eating, is it okay for her to do it in the night? Because that's yeah. her schedule, it's just fine as long as it's within that eight hour span. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a myth there. You, know, you go ahead, Brian. I was gonna say if you're because because your schedule's kind of backwards, it, it doesn't really matter if it's nighttime. It, that's the time when you're awake. So, uh, yeah, whatever that little window, your eating window, it doesn't matter where that is as long as you're inside of it. You know. Yeah, Lisa, like you're feeling like it should, you shouldn't eat at night because that's what we've always been told, but that's what your schedule is. Because I think the intermittent fasting was one of the best things for the maintenance. Once I lost the weight and then kind of figured out the intermittent fasting and, and read about that, um, even when you go off a little bit, 
I'm still able to maintain and not gain that weight back because I'm staying within that eight hour window and trying to keep it down to even six hours sometimes. So, and that's helped a lot. Well, I think in Dr. Barry's book, you know, one of the myths are if you eat at night, you have, you're going to put on added weight. The reality of it, that is a myth. And Dr. Barry says that's not true. So Lisa, okay. if you want to eat at night, uh, <laughs> three o'clock in the morning or whatever, and eat your, your, your eight hour windows from three in the morning till 11 in the morning, um, I think you're going to be good. And I think you're, you will start to feel the positive effects of, of in that eight hour window, regardless yeah. of what time you start the eight hours. I work till three. Well, for right now, I work till three and then I'm up till, I don't know, whenever, get up. I haven't been sleeping that good. I'm up early by, I guess, 11 o'clock or so, maybe even earlier. And I stay up most of the day because I just don't sleep that well. Being on third shift, it totally. So third shift is what, 11 p.m.? Yeah, well, my hours are nine o'clock. I go in at nine, so. Nine, okay. Yeah, and they're actually cut the hours down a little bit right now because of this. COVID, we lost a lot of business. Believe it or not, in medical, we lost business because these patients aren't going to the doctor's offices, so we're getting less work. It's starting to pick up a little bit, so I'm hoping they will extend our hours back, but it's rough. Well, so, everybody, yeah. I just looked at, I just, I just, it's time to wrap this up for, uh, for another week of Keto Rocks, and so thank you all for joining in, and as always, Feel free to send your comments or questions to ketorocks22 at gmail.com. And until next week, stay safe, stay well. And uh, if you go out in public, don't forget to put a mask on. Uh, Brian, you got any <laughs> party words for anybody? Uh, God, parting words. Uh, don't eat sugar. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Laura? You got anything you want to say? No, oh, just thanks for inviting us. Oh, no. Tell your friends. We'd love to have more, more people to hear you know, what people are experiencing by, by going against what we've been taught to do. So thank you for joining us. Spread the word. And we'll see you guys next week. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.